Can you hear it? I trust that this year will be a great year for each and every one day. May it be the best year of your life. May it be the best season of your life. You might be sitting here this morning and uh, it might be the rocky start and a difficult start. But God, here's the good news. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And I just want to declare over your life that this, this year is going to be a great year. It's going to be a wonderful year. It's going to be a year where many doors will open in your life. Many doors will open. And, uh, yeah, bless you all. Uh, everybody who's here for the first time this morning, you are welcome. The Lord refresh you, may He touch you, and uh, may His Spirit will speak to your hearts. I think this year, last year, the last two years, we've been, we've been really delving into the theme of righteousness. Um, and we've looked specifically in detail into the teachings of the word of righteousness last year. Um, foundations, laying the foundations of our faith, and uh, I trust that for those of you who's been following, that it's been refreshing, that it's changed your life, and uh, you know, the, 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 the beautiful growth has taken place in your, in your lives, we've witnessed many, many hearts, many lives that have been, been grown, and uh, we've seen so much fruit, so much fruit in, in, in many of you, and uh, I pray this year that will be fruitful year. I think for this year, so the Lord always takes us from righteousness, from righteousness into rest. There's no righteousness in my life, or the actions of righteousness will take me to a place of my rest. So allow me to say this, that any area in my life where righteousness is not being settled, I will not be in rest. The absence of peace, the absence of rest in my life means that somewhere in the foundations of righteousness, there's a crack or there's a loophole. That's why it's important to understand ultimately that the God of righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that He came and that He is our righteousness. Jesus said, if your righteousness is spoken to people, if your righteousness is inside do not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, the scribes of the Pharisees, if you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. What was the scribes of the Pharisees busy? Ask the king was evil. Do we need things right? Show the people how right and how pure they are, and how perfect they are. The word says, that's what he does. It means nothing. So Jesus says, if your righteousness do not exceed, showing people how perfect and how great you are. Because the motive of your heart is to show people how perfect and how great you are. You are you aren't living in the righteousness of Christ. We cannot work for our righteousness. We can do nothing for our righteousness. Nothing, not, nothing. Every, every work you try to do to be more righteous is a dead work. We can receive, we can only receive Christ's righteousness by faith. By putting our faith and our trust in the Son of God. That's it. There's no other way. And if we in my life when I put my faith and my trust in the Son of God, guess what? I'm in peace. I'm in rest. Here with the prophet Isaiah says, if you have your Bible together, turn to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah is the first prophet of the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 30. Verse 15. So we see the rebellion of Israel. We see how they, how they constantly push against the word and instructions of God. And what God says, they do the opposite. We see this rebellion here. In two chapters 30 and chapter 28 of Isaiah, we even see these people parading in their sins. Is that familiar? 
Do you see certain people, certain billboards, certain things happening right now around sexuality and identity when they array about their sins? We are this, we are that. People parading in sin. What's the same? Listen to this word, what God says. And God speaks to this rebellious people in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15, and he says to them, For thus is the law, God, the only one of his life, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In returning and in rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But you would not. But you would not. Let's have been for this year. The seed is swollen. This year, our theme is to come and to position ourselves. To Christ in the living places. Allow him to position us so that we can receive who he is and what he can to accomplish for us. That's what receiving means. It's to be in a place where the Prince of Peace has become the key and the direction of my peace, of my life. Now I am, I am in peace and we are going to sit this thing together. We're going to wait on the Lord. I believe the Lord is saying we have entered the season where the Lord is inviting His church, His bride, His people to rest in Him. When the peace of God comes, there's no place for frustration. There's no place for arguments that exalt itself above the knowledge of God. When the peace of God comes, everything inside of me becomes quiet, very quiet. See, peace is not the absence of noise. Often we get frustrated when we hear the little ones. And we know still we think we have peace. That's not peace. Peace is not the absence of noise outside us. Peace is the presence of a person. Peace is the presence of a person. The Prince of Peace. I believe this is we God is drawing us into, into his wrist, into his wrist, so that no, no other, other voice will speak loudly inside of you the voice of Christ, the voice of his spirit. What voices right now are directing your thought patterns that are not the voice of Christ, not the voice of his spirit?
chapter 4 says, He who has eaten my race to the He who has eaten my race to cease from his works. It doesn't mean we read nothing. No. It doesn't mean we are inactive. But it means what happens inside of us are filled with faith in his ability, not my ability. It means that what happens inside of me is defined and determined by his voice, by his spirit, by his presence. Talk a little bit about this space, this inner space. Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 4. Let's go to Mark chapter 4. Jesus uses beautiful illustrations to draw people into this place of rest. Mark chapter 4. Chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 1. And again he began to teach by the sea. Can you see the sea and his voice just reverberating through thousands of people? The water helping him just to, to breathe his life, breathe his life. And again he began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it. The sea, and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by parables. Many things by parables. We're going to look at a couple of parables this morning. And said to them in his teaching, Listen, he starts off with the first parable. Listen, behold, a sower went out sowing, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came up. Devoured it, some fell on sunny ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root within, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded a crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some hundred. And he said to them, He who has an ear, they hear. And he goes on and he explains the purpose of his people. You see. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. That's why I think God will open up this morning in our hearts to know the mystery. His kingdom. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So that see, they may see and not perceive. And hearing, they may hear and not understand. Lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven in them. Now he explains this, he says, and he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How do you understand all the parables? So Jesus starts here, he breaks open this parable for these people, and he says to them, if you do not hear and understand and perceive this parable, the rest of the parables will not make sense to you. It will not break open for you. And he starts explaining the whole the whole context of the seed and the soil. They said to them, the sower sows the wood, which is the seed. And these are the ones by the way, by the wayside, where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word 
that was sown in their hearts. Verse 16, these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, so in here only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, listen to this, when persecution or hardship arises specifically for the word's sake, friends, the word of God in your life will always be tested. Always. There's no way that God's word can come to you and won't be tested. It is not the word of God. No root in themselves. After when the tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorny thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things. Entering in church the word. Church the word. And it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground, and those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit. Psalm 34, 64, Psalm 84. Is this powerful? So here we see, we see, we see something of the nature of a seed, and I want to spend some time on the nature of a seed. I bought some seed here this morning. So the seed is the word of the Lord, which is incorruptible. Incorruptible. Then I was thinking about the fact of the soil. On the soil. Which represents the space of the foundation in which the word falls. The nature of the soil. Because it's neither the one or the other. So it's both. Because we see the word of God comes to, to all men, comes to people. In the seed, slide here. What's going to happen to the seed of the chip of the pot we got we got in? Nothing. People are almost going to stay for two minutes. They're going to sweep it up. It's going to be See what happens with the first section of this parable. The seed comes. It's flung on top. And the devil comes in and it, it, it picks it up. It says something about the swirl, and we're going to talk about the swirl now. Nothing wrong with the seed. The seed of God's word is incorruptible. It's not incorruptible. Then you see seed planted in shallow, in shallow soil. She put a little pot there. When it really comes up, there's no, there's no place for it to take root. And then the sun swamps it and it dies. And, 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 and Jesus speaks to like people hear the word of the Lord, they receive it with gladness. But because they have no root in themselves, there's no, there's no place where we, 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 we can take root. Because the soil is not deep enough. And you then very interesting about the soil where there's enough soil and where there's good soil and soil that's been taken care of healthy, healthy soil now we've been to a fall where we when he starts taking up children and he says the one I'm married to she took us once on a little like stopping a little what do you call that? Party to a farm where they plant fruits and vegetables, where they invite people to party and to see what they do with the 
the soil and how the how how the fruit and veggie grows. And you literally walk through those veggie gardens. But boy, did you take something? We we had tomatoes that I've never tasted before in my life. It was so delicious. You could actually you could taste it. Tastes very really different from the tomatoes we buy at grocery stores. But then the guy started explaining the process. The seed that they use is, is a different type of seed. Now, I don't know if it's gene or all this nonsense. It's, it's where we, we, uh, we, we stop being manipulated. That's not the seed of the world. The seed of the world is not being manipulated. It's not the rock, but it's perfect. It's perfect. And that's the power to produce in your life. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. A thing that's been modified, a thing that's been manipulated, cannot produce. And then we swallow it into the soil. And the evidence of it was just in the fruit. It was in the taste of the fruit. So, See the soil, look at the soil. You can see the soil when they lift it, when they, like they put it coming over the soil for some time. And you, they lift it up and you can see it's dark. That's like, yes, it's amazing what they've done with the soil. So here's a very good point. This morning I felt the Lord lead me to put my hand in the soil and to encourage you just to speak prophetically to put your hands in the soil. So that you can feel an experience what this kingdom reality should look like in our lives. Because Jesus said the kingdom is in us and among us. But if we don't experience the kingdom in us, alive in us, how are we going to how are we gonna release the kingdom? It's like a seed falling into fertile soil. And it produces. Interesting what he says there. Did he guys what he says? There are three things that corrupt it. He talks about this. Uh, of this world. And here specifically this context, it also refers to having lack financial. Always worried. How am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to get in? How often do we struggle with the thought? Are we going to make it through this fight? Are there going to be enough? The kids. And it creates fear in us. our trust in God's ability. Now we want to make things work and we fall out of faith. Because the cares of this world are just too much. The second thing that he speaks about here is, he says, yeah, now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of the world is the last one. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of the just, this is just the side of the point. I have so much. It's, it's, it's all about getting the new thing. So I, I, I constantly, I'm constantly in my inner space, in my inner world around, okay, what's next, what's next? And I never come to a position of rest. Just resting. See what the thorns does, the thorn chokes. It chokes the drop. It chokes the growth. So whether there's kids on the one side or whether there's, there's uh, liberty in the sense of I've got the ability to do things and to make things happen. Both both are sins. And we have to we, we have to consider this piece. We have to consider this. of the world and the 
deceitfulness of riches and the desires of the desires for other things entering in and choke the word and it becomes our free form. But these are the ones so that can sound that those who who hear the word accept it and they it. The second, the second section now, I talked about all three variables here for, for a moment. He talks about life under a basket. When the kingdom of God becomes a reality for you, you have received this kingdom by faith, this salvation by faith, it becomes a reality to you. He says here, should the land be put under, be put under, be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be sick on a lampstand? There's nothing in it that will not be revealed. Everything about this kingdom reality should be all to be revealed. How? Through our lives. Through the seed that germinates, comes up and brings forth fruit. Nobody sees it at first because you buy it. It goes in there and dies. But when the tree comes up, we see everything. When the weeds come up, when, when the thorns come up, we see what's actually inside. Then he said to them, and I'm so sensible with this, this week, he said, then, then Jesus said to them, take heed what you hear. Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And you hear more will be given to you. Be careful what you hear. I want to say something this morning. I want to make a statement. I want to, I want to, I want to equate the soil. I'm jumping the soil. The soil of our hearts is the condition in which faith or unbelief defines it. There's no in between. The soil in your life are either defined by faith, by belief, or by unbelief. Why do you think Jesus said, Be careful what you hear? Paul writes the church in Romans, he says, Faith, now faith comes by. Now faith comes by. Hearing. And hearing by the word of the Lord. What's the context of your heart? What's the context of the soil of your heart? Belief or unbelief? Context in your heart is unbelief. You won't trust. You won't put your trust in anything else but in the word of the Lord. And see, Jesus demonstrates this even in the most tainted, harsh situation in the desert. When the devil comes to you, and what does the devil test? He tests this. The Son of God, who spoke those words of me, the Father said to you, my son. That's the word of God in your life. If you are the Son of God, do this. Turn these rocks into bread. You see, friends, that's always what we contend for in the church, and that's where the devil comes in. Let's see how much we can do. And let's teach the king of the hand, those who do. God is not there. Created us to be to be living doings. He primarily created us to be living beings. And of the created us, see God created heaven and earth. He made everything perfect. The conditions were perfect. And then he placed that into the garden. He made it. And then he rested. Because he wanted the life-giving souls, the, the, the living beings, to live and operate and move from his beast and never from any other place. And that never changed. It never changed. But the one thing that disturbs that rest and, and, and us moving from the curse of rest. So the incorruptible seed of God's word cannot grow or be 
be fruitful or be a fruit. In soil, that's the soil. Soil, that's hard. Soil, that's fluff. Thorns and weeds. Do you know that the weeds are also the that they come from seed? A thorn comes from thorny bushes comes from seed. in your life. Now you recognize the whole the whole you can take And boy, if you come to close that that bitch, don't come too close. Can't get one more at all. So you stay. And so that's what we are perfected with. God wants to bring us to a place where we understand Him. With this soil, we, we allow our rich spirit to come. And to, uh, to clean this up. To bring water. Suffering the heart of sin. To clean up. Why? Because you love it to be fruitful. Want you to be fruitful. If we do not understand God's purposes and that God wants us to be fruitful, we will struggle to be fruitful. It will be very difficult for us to be fruitful. And we will constantly have a battle inside us producing, 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 but the moment we rest in who he is, then this becomes a reality. Then we can draw with him. Then we can gather with him. We can bear fruit. We can have impact. Jesus made us to form God in He is the living word of God. He's the word of God. One John, John says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Jesus speaks this says, himself. This is my words to you are spirit and life. My words. Incorruptible. My words. Do you understand how powerful is what we confess with our lips? You can only confess what you hear inside yourself talk or return what you talk, what you speak outwardly. Jesus said the body, he said, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles you, but what comes out of the mouth that defiles you. Why? Because what comes out speaks of what's going on in the soil. Is it belief or unbelief? It's by trusting people, in people's promises, in wealth, in riches. It's by trust in the name of the Lord. Some cases, some may trust in horses, others may trust in chariots. But we trust in the name of the Lord. I declare this church will trust in the name of the Lord. Horses and chariots came from Egypt. The wealthy places. But the psalmist knew that there's no wealth, there's no riches, there's nothing, nothing in life. That can bring forth fruit. But the Lord, trust in the Lord. Proverbs, Solomon says, trust in the Lord with all your might. Don't trust in the Lord with all your power, your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge the Lord with your words and your your past strength. The 
faith that gives us and the abilities faith that you you feel dream for faith if we allow the spice of our hearts, the soil to be worked, to be nourished, to be watered by the spirit, and then we can give fruit and we can become fruit for an all that By saying this, it's the spirit of your life. The Holy Spirit of your life. The Holy Spirit of your life to the word, to the seed. And if we, if we are not, not going to allow the Holy Spirit to bring life into the seed of the word of God, into our hearts, there's nothing to happen. It's only in our world, but it's the spirit of his life. Jesus said to the disciples, my words to you are spirit and life. Spirit and life. It's the spirit who makes alive. Who raised Jesus from the dead? The spirit. And the same spirit that raised him from the dead lives inside us. To do what? To give us life. Resurrection life. And that's very important to understand. If we look at the principle of the seed going into the soil, dying, Christ going into the earth, dying, the spirit gave life, the spirit raised him from the dead. Who raises us up? Who brings life? The spirit. So let's allow the Holy Spirit to bring life and breathe life. Paul writes in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3, he says, the following he says, Who knows the heart of man or the spirit of man? Who knows the heart of God of the spirit of God who searches the things of God of the spirit of God? The spirit searches the depths of what's within us. And then he brings forth life. And then here, what you and Paul are is incredible. Because we, we see nothing right now. We don't see a pumpkin coming down here right now. But there's a sea in here. And in that sea, there are thousands of pumpkins. But we can't see it. But when that pumpkin dies, and it generates, and the life starts shooting down because of the breath of the Spirit of God. Soon, many people will eat and many people will see. Paul writes, he says, it's the Spirit of God who lives on underneath the soul. And then the song he says, I has not seen. Has not heard, nor has entered the minds or the hearts of man the things, the things the Lord has prepared for those who love him. Where does the things happen in our lives? Not by the things we do. Why the things that come in our life? What happens in silence? Be careful what you hear. Take heed what you hear. For it will define the course and the trajectory of your life. When the Spirit of God speaks in our hearts, it's not being sure that things matter. Closing off with Proverbs 4.23, one of my life verses, Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your hearts. Keep your heart. Why? For from it, the issues of life flow out. Are you ready to see it? To rest, to let go and let God, 
to allow the Spirit of God to do the work inside of him. And not try to control. Have you ever seen a seed planted and then every morning you lost it? Where are you? I don't know who we need. You can come out now. So, so scattered in seeds. Listen to this. And then what, what, what's he doing? Oh, oh, boss him. No. He goes to bring and he sleeps. He forgets about the seed. That's the best thing, guys. Here's God's pattern. Is God's pattern. He always leads us into the path of righteousness for he is them safe. So that we can rest. The first parable was the seed of the soul. He was talking about the position of our hearts. So the position is always about righteousness. Righteousness is my position in Christ. Nothing I can work for. I have position for all. Surrender our lives, spend every part of our 
all you ought to as for me. Because it can't be your Lord of our lives today. It's the Lord of our lives We praise you. We honor you. We give you. Thank you for a new year. Thank you for a new season. Bless this year, Lord. Bless every family, every individual world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.